assalamu alaikum uh, welcome everyone on board uh, we will continue our discussion uh, and it seems that uh, i have just opened a pandora's box <laughs> it will take some time for me to finish this but i think uh, it will be helpful for uh, everyone and because <clears throat> majority of people do acls bls pls even nrp but uh, very few of us are the one even i have not i had this thing uh, maybe i have read the uh, or i have gained the knowledge passively from reading other sources uh, but uh, practically i never uh, read this uh, uh, like uh, atls a number of things are the one which are available in our other sources but we will inshallah we will just try because we did uh, in the first uh, discussion we just had a broad overview of what trauma is um, like what are the things which may be required in the second discussion, we started and we finished primary survey, which include the airway, breathing, circulation, disability, exposure. Okay, so now uh, in, in which our main focus is to look for any emergency thing which need to be attended immediately with reference to airway or breathing or circulation or disability, uh, control of bleeding, uh, immediate management of tension, pneumothorax, immediate, immediate management of airway or things like that. Okay, so we will continue from here. So in, in secondary survey, uh, the, the, the main message is that you, you will start only when you have finished uh, the primary survey. Okay. And vitals, uh, improvement of vital patient vitals function have been demonstrated. So because, if, for example, uh, ongoing resuscitation is needed until the time you are not having in this, uh, like uh, another thing you should be keeping in mind, uh, in your mind that the principle behind the primary survey in other way in our uh, 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 like uh, domain will be like to achieve the uh, goals we set in the damage control resuscitation. Okay. So we'll just try to uh, optimize, uh, we try to set uh, realistic goals and we don't try to cover uh, correct everything, but we uh, at least we just bring the patient towards life. So this is the basic principle uh, which, we, which we follow in damage control resuscitation. So same principle will be here, okay? So what will be the secondary survey? So secondary survey will have head to two evaluation of the trauma patient and complete history and examination reassessment of vital signs, each region of the body is completely examined, potential for missing an injury uh, or failing to appreciate the significance of injury. Maybe some of the findings, like uh, I will give you example that maybe in primary survey, you missed uh, a rib fracture. Maybe you will be able to get it in secondary survey. So things will be that. So you will just take a his detailed history with reference how it happens and any anything related, maybe you will find some additional information with reference to allergies, medications you currently use, okay, past illness or pregnancy, last meal, events. Uh, this is the same thing which is being used and actually, by the way, in uh, uh, like uh, 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 in the PLS as well and even in um, like uh, other other uh, resuscitation things. Okay, so what will be doing? So there are some uh, some points with reference to uh, like mechanism of injury and suspected injury pattern. So in uh, frontal impaction, automobile collision, bent steering wheel, knee imprint, dashboard, bull's eyes fracture in screen. And there will be chances. It's not written here, but I think uh, front impact also, frontal impact will have the uh, this uh, whiplash injury. Uh, we will, inshallah, try to discuss in, in the coming discussion. So the, the pattern may be uh, cervical spine fracture, anterior flail chest, myocardial contusion, and pneumothorax, okay, Tra uh, traumatic aortic disruption, fractured uh, spleen or liver, uh, posterior fracture, dislocation of hip. So these are the the things which you will have with the front impact, okay, the with the it is collision with the front side impact, uh, contralateral neck strain, like the head will be going towards the other side, head injury, uh, cervical spine fracture. It majority of things will be the same, but they are just uh, telling a pattern. Uh, anything uh, can occur in any any sort of injury because it will also depend that uh, the uh, like uh, seat belts were seat belts were there or not okay and what sort of uh, vehicle it was so a number of things will be important okay uh, with the rear impact cervical spine injury head injury soft tissue injury to neck 
ejection from the vehicle okay ejection from the vehicle precludes meaningful prediction of injury patients but place uh, places patient at greater risk for virtually all injury mechanism uh, like uh, i i told yesterday that i had a list and it in which there was ejection of the the person who was driving the car at 200 km per hour and can you believe that he did not have head injury he did not have spine injury no other injury but i think the way he fell down because it he fell down on the sand so i think this uh, saved him from other injuries but he had pelvic fracture okay he had pelvic fracture so like uh, pelvic fracture and femur fracture so uh, this was more, more uh, mainly because of the impact he fell down he was ejected from the car okay so similarly so motor vehicle impact from with pedestrian head injury traumatic i think this is the same thing which uh, in different way can be so you when so the take home message for you will be that whenever you are uh, analyzing any patient with trauma you can enumerate these things okay and you can target in that way so you can make a list of these things and one two three four times if you will uh, take the history or an analyze the patient with this list in, in, uh, you will not miss anything okay uh, stab wound okay so penetrating injury if it is anterior chest cardiac tamponade hemothorax pneumothorax hemoneumothorax with it may, mainly with the uh, cutting uh, like stabs uh, left thoraco abdominal and uh, so if it's from the left side so splenic injury will be more if it is from the right side it will be liver okay so you should be thinking uh, in this way so gunshot wound Highly likely of injury, trajectory from uh, like re retained projectile help predict. So, and in the, with the thermal injury, the you should be considering that uh, in addition to other things, uh, you there will be problem with the airway. Okay, so inhalational and burn burn injury. You see, you will see carbon monoxide poisoning, upper airway swelling, pulmonary edema, and maybe initially patient is fine, but later on you will lose the airway if you not maintain the airway in time. Okay. So, okay. So, blood trauma. Just a second, please. Okay, so we were here. And blunt trauma often results from automobile collisions. So there will be some difference in the blunt trauma and penetrating trauma. We had uh, we had discussed some of the findings. Okay, so mm, so whenever uh, whenever we uh, uh, like uh, even if you remember. Uh, we will when we do do this BLS. So there is a saying. Uh, there is a word which we use. Uh, scene is safe okay so we have to would consider these things so this is i think this is the same thing the history of exposure to chemical toxins and radiation is important to obtain for two main reasons these agents can produce a variety of pulmonary cardiac and internal uh, organ dysfunctions in injured patients and they can present a hazard to the healthcare providers as well so this is also with the resuscitation whenever you are doing the resuscitation scene should be safe for you as well because you should not uh, because if you are not able to handle yourself later on so uh, like so you, you should be pulling out the patient to a place where you are safe or barrier methods or uh, prevention should be uh, there for you yourself okay so frequently the clinician only means uh, preparation for treating a patient with a history of exposure to hazardous environment is to understand the general principle of management of such conditions. So, okay. So, with head, uh, of course, uh, there will be some uh, apparent injuries to identify all related neurological injuries and any other significant injury. Entire scalp and head should be examined for lacerations, contusions, or evidence of fractures. Okay. Of course, you will confirm it with the radiological study. Uh, because edema around the eyes can later preclude an in-depth in examination, the eyes should be re-evaluated for re like visual activity, uh, acuity, pupillary size, hemorrhage of the conjunctiva or fundus, penetrating injury, contact lenses, remove before and edema occurs. So you should be doing this 
all these things will be in the secondary survey dislocation of the lens ocular entrapment okay so facial maxillary structures especially if you uh, you know this will be creating problem for your airway management so it's, this is very important and this is one thing and uh, like maybe uh, the way the 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 facial maxillary fractures are you you have if like if you remember there is one leaf fork one two three so in that way maybe in leaf fork three you can you have you have to maintain the airway with the tracheostomy so things like that so that will be important for you you may uh, another thing will be that the bleeding even not significant injury if there is bleeding going on it can obstruct or it can cause aspiration in the way that if the patient is inhaling later on, if uh, like conscious level deteriorated, this will be a factor for the aspiration. So in that case, in which uh, you uh, airway or face, face is involved, this will be care you should be uh, considering. Okay. Uh, especially if there is a nasal involvement, so gastric intubation should be performed via the oral route. Okay. Uh, yeah, this uh, NG tube. You should not try to have uh, NG tube, you should prefer orogastric tube. Okay. Uh, facial edema in patients with the massive facial injury can preclude a complete eye examination. Of course, if there will be edema, you will not be able to uh, uh, to pick the, the findings. Minimize edema and development by elevation of the head of the bed. Okay. So this will relieve, uh, relieve some of the engorgement. So uh, another thing which they have told that uh, perform examination before. Uh, edema occurs. Some facial maxillary fractures such as nasal fracture and non displaced zygomatic fractures and orbital limb fractures can be difficult to identify early in the evaluation process. So maybe later on with the radiological study or CT scan, you will be able uh, Okay, so maintain a high index of suspicion and obtain imaging when necessary. So re-evaluate re patients frequently. Uh, with the cervical spine and neck, patients with maxillofacial or head trauma should be presumed to have a cervical spine injury. That's a discussion which we from which we did in our first discussion. So you have to you will rule out with certain criteria, not not by only clinical examination. The absence of neurological deficit does not exclude injury to cervical spine. Okay, so this is the important point. Continual evaluation of cervical spine is completed. Evaluation may be uh, may include radiological series, CT scan, which should be reviewed by a doctor experienced in detecting. Or radiological evaluation can be avoided in patients who meet the. This is something else, I think. Like, okay. Inspection, palpation, auscultation, uh, cervical spine tenderness, subcutaneous emphysema, tracheal deviation, and laryngeal fractures can be discovered on a detailed examination. The carotid arteries should be palpated and auscultated for bruise. Common sign of potential injury is seat belt mark. Uh, the most major cervical vascular injuries are the result of penetrating injury. However, the blunt force to the neck or traction injury uh, from a shoulder harshness restraints can result in intimal disruption. Like it can be minor injury or it can be uh, even up to dissection or resulting like too much bleeding. Okay. So blunt carotid injury can present with comma without neurological finding. <clears throat> CT angiography, angiography or duplex ultrasonography may be required to exclude the possibility of major cervical vascular injury when the mechanism of injury suggests this possibility like these are these are details of course may you may not be needed needing it but it will be resulting in either uh, neurological findings or maybe patient because this in in this uh, way patient will bleed massively especially if there is penetrating injury so so protection of potentially unstable cervical spine is imperative for patients who are wearing any type of protective helmet and extreme care must be given when removing the helmet. In the, in the subsequent, they will show how to remove the helmet because uh, this sometimes these this will be resulting in even further injury, especially in the neck, Okay, if you try to do. Penetrating injuries through the neck can potentially injure several organ systems. Wound that extend through the platysma should be explored manually probed with instrument or treated by individuals in the ED who are uh, who are not trained to manage such injuries not, should not be ex, uh, explored manually probed with instruments or treated with individual so it should be done by specialized people uh, finding of uh, active arterial bleeding and expanding hematoma arterial bruit um, or airway compromise usually requires operative evaluation so like 
this why it is important here because not only the patient will be losing the blood if it is compressing it will it will result in uh, like air collapse of airway as well so this is an important thing uh, with reference to chest of course and uh, the pneumothorax or like it will result in ultimately if it is tension pneumothorax with the rib fracture it can cause significant hemodynamic as well as respiratory problems okay so complete evaluation of chest wall requires palpation of uh, the entire chest cage, including the clavicles, ribs, and sternum. Sternal pressure can be painful if the sternum is fractured or costochondral separation. So it is very painful, uh, sternal fractures. Uh, significant chest injury can manifest with pain, dyspnea, and hypoxia. Evaluation includes uh, inspection, palpation, auscultation, and percussion. And of course, with the just uh, the uh, radiography. So auscultation is conducted uh, high on the anterior wall of pneumothorax and the, at the posterior basis for, for pneumothorax. Like there will be dull if there is, uh, of course, if there is fluid and it will be like uh, hyper resonant if there is pneumothorax. Although the auscultated find can be difficult to evaluate in a noisy environment, they can uh, be excluded extremely harmful. Actually, thing is that clinical examination, now again, I, I will repeat the same thing. Maybe it is not written here. But the same ultrasound can help you, okay? Because ultrasound can be done immediately on the bedside. However, for radiology, maybe you need to transfer the patient for CT scan. Of course, um, bedside uh, chest X-ray can be done, okay? So, like, you, you have to coordinate or you will, uh, like, compile the final decision with the whole uh, examination as well as uh, the investigation which, you, which are available to you. Okay, so abdominal injuries, uh, abdominal and pelvis. So identifying the specific injury is less important than determining whether operator intervention is required. A normal initial examiner does not exclude a significant intra-abdominal injury, it's as as I mentioned in the in the in my initial discussion that it is very important because maybe there will be. Like maybe in initial observation, you did not find any uh, like uh, distension, abdominal distension, or even in the obese patient, you will not be able to appreciate whether it, uh, the bleeding is going on. So initially, maybe you are doing fast and the bleeding is not there or significant well enough to be diagnosed. Maybe later on, it you can uh, diagnose it. So this is very important. Don't uh, consider it to be ruled out unless, unless it is it is properly investigated okay and i have seen that many times uh, this may be a cause of uh, suspected collapse in the patient because you are doing everything apparently the things are fine and then maybe like later on as here mentioned that maybe compartment syndrome will develop later on or the uh, the bleeding will be uh, obvious to you okay so especially with pelvic fracture can be uh, suspected by identification of ecchymosis over the iliac wings, pubis, labia or scrotum. Pain on palpation of the pelvic ring is an important finding in alert patients. In addition, assessment of peripheral pulses can identify vascular injuries. So if uh, you are finding uh, like or suspecting vascular injury, uh, you will lose the pulses. Okay. okay. Uh, DPL, again, I don't know what is the uh, surgeon can answer that. What is the role of DPL with the uh, availability of hi fi uh, investigations or sonography or CT scan? I don't know what is the role of DPL. I cannot comment about, comment about it. You can ask uh, some of the surgeons uh, at your place to find answer that it is still needed or not. Again, perineal injuries, uh, maybe for contusion, hematoma. Okay. So head to toe examination, you will have the detailed examination of all uh, the, okay, so some points here, pelvic fractures can produce large blood loss. This is important for us, not only pelvis, also long bone fracture. So placement of pelvic binder or sheet can limit blood loss for pelvic fracture. Do not repeatedly or vigorously man manipulate the pelvis in patient with fracture as clots can become dislodged. So this is another important thing, okay? So even you will uh, you will uh, listen this thing that even not only in pelvic fracture, whenever you are dealing with any orthopedic case in which there is long bone fracture, please try 
to to have very careful manipulation because there are so many incidents people may face that during the transfer of the patient from the trolley to the bed uh, to, uh, of the operation operating table uh, patient develop embolism so this is not only with this one should be thinking about in any any other case so that's why it's very important to be ready for any complication whenever you are dealing with uh, orthopedics so it, it can be very unpredictable at some at times okay extreme uh, ex extremity fractures and injuries are particularly challenging to diagnose in patient with head or spinal cord injury this is an another important point because if the patient is not conscious or there is spinal cord injury and patient is uh, like uh, paraplegic or quad quadriplegic for example it will be difficult at times because otherwise maybe patient will be having pain or uh, so you will so th this is an important point uh, image uh, any areas of suspicion perform frequent reassessment to identify any developing swelling or ecchymosis and uh, recognize that subtle findings in patients with head injuries such as limiting movement of an extremity or response to stimulus of an area may be the uh, only clues to presence of an injury so this is an important thing okay uh, compartments in the room can develop any area when there is a like crush injury another thing which is not written here you should be thinking that whenever there is crush injury uh, can anyone tell what complication can occur in a crush injury imran or... rhabdomyolysis rhabdomyolysis so rhabdomyolysis you will not come to know hyperkalemia hyperkalemia okay so uh, like uh, hyperkalemia and then renal failure so this uh, this should have uh, you you should have a high suspicion in in uh, like uh, in such conditions okay so long bone fractures crush injuries prolonged ischemia and circumferential thermal thermal injuries you will have development of compartment syndrome it is not only in the in the peripheries it can be there in the abdomen as well okay uh, Okay, so uh, don't forget to examine the back. Okay, so because in this in this scenario, it is very uh, easily uh, uh, you can miss it. So you have to think about these things. Okay, so neurological survey. Okay, A comprehensive neurological examination includes motor and sensory evaluation. Okay, uh, as well as the conscious level pupillary size and response. This is very important. Okay. So GC score facilitates detection of early changes and trends in uh, patient's neurological status. So uh, motor, sensory, this pupil size, okay? And GCS and AVPU, awake, verbal, pain, un unconscious. Early consultation with neurosurgeon is required for the patients with head injury. Monitor patients frequently for deterioration in the level of consciousness or change in changes in neurological examination as these findings can reflect worsening of intra intracranial injury you may find some some signs which are related to raised icp so this will be initially you did, did not find but now you find some things like that so it will point towards some um, neurological problem okay uh, reassess oxygenation adequacy of ventilation and perfusion of the brain so uh, you will go back to a b c d e okay uh, intracranial surgical intervention as i mentioned before that any anything which which is resulting in uh, raised icp or there is some uh, F, some some finding which need which can be uh, uh, like uh, uh, it can result in secondary brain injury requires eva evacuation so maybe in the form of bur bur holes or uh, like uh, open drainage so may may need things like that okay uh, thoracic and lumbar spine fractures or neurological must be considered based on physical exam finding and mechanism of injury. Other injuries may mask, uh, can mask the physical finding of spinal injuries and they can remain undetected unless the clinicians obtain the appropriate x-rays. That's why, uh, Sabad, you were asking yesterday about the PAN CT. So actually, in whenever you have polytrauma or things like that, you should have uh, a PAN CT uh, because it will, it will rule out all of the things which we are uh, we can suspect. Okay, have it any evidence of loss of sensation, paralysis, or weakness suggest uh, a majority a major injury to the spinal column or peripheral nervous system. 
So neurological should be documented when identified, even when transferred to another facility or doctor for special care is necessary. Protection of the spinal cord is required at all times until a spinal injury is excluded. According to Nexus criteria or cervical Canadian C spine, early consultation with a neurosurgeon officer is necessary if a spinal injury is detected. Okay, so uh, adjuncts to a secondary survey will be these things: CT scan of uh, head, chest, abdomen, or spine, contrast, urography, and angiography, transesophageal ultrasound, bronchoscopy, esophagoscopy, or other diagnostic procedures. Okay, so they will come in the secondary survey. So that initially maybe CT chest X-ray is done, and then you will further go towards the the CT scans. Okay. Mm, okay. So an AP chest film or additional films pertinent to the site of the suspected injury should be obtained. Okay. The same things they are telling. Uh, Urinary, they are just telling trauma patient must be re-evaluated constantly. And then initial life-threatening injuries are managed. Other equally life-threatening problems or less severe injury may become apparent, which can significantly affect the ultimate prognosis of the patient. A highest index of suspicion facilitates early diagnosis and management. So this is something actually, this information will be helping you in, in other cases as well. Like this is just a revision that usually you should have at least 0.5 to 1 ml per kg per hour of urine, okay? And uh, uh, similarly for uh, a pediatric patient, uh, after uh, one year of age, uh, 1 ml per kg per hour, okay? So 0.5 to 1 ml, if you forget, 0.5 to 1 ml per kg per hour is a good answer, equal to the weight. Uh, okay, so as I mentioned before, that pain will be a very big important factor. Maybe your, if the patient is knocked down and head injury and patient is not conscious, that maybe you will not, you are not thinking about pain, but especially when the patient is awake, you are considering it more. But at any point of time, whenever you are uh, anesthetized, like uh, you are managing this patient, that's why you need to think about these things. Okay. Muscular skeletal injuries produce pain and anxiety in conscious patient. Effective analgesia usually require the administration of opiates or anxiolytic. But whenever you are using opiates or anxiolytics, you should be thinking about the patient conscious level, okay? And intramuscular injections at that time will not be a good idea, okay? Uh, okay. So, a definitive care, whenever the patient treatment needs exceed the capability of receiving institute, you have to refer, okay? So, that is the concept of transferring to the, to the better place. And um, uh, especially, you need to record the time and all the happenings, okay? Because if the patient is even, because the problem is that in this, managing this case, and not only the medical legal things will be there, and then if the patient needs to be shifted to the other place, again, the you will have to keep the very good record, okay? And even uh, the findings will uh, define the management at times. So you need to have a very go good record keeping, uh, meticulous record keeping in that case. Consent for the treatment. This is another thing which we which we face in life threatening conditions. Uh, in majority of the hospitals, you will see that there is a protocol that two consultant will sign for the things. Okay, so this is one of because if you don't have that, and you will not uh, delay the management, which is necessary to to save the life of the patient. So this is the, the main important thing. Okay. Mm, okay, so this is uh, also they have some some points, uh, forensic evidence. Okay, so medical legal, as I told you, that you have to keep the record with reference to blood alcohol concentration and other drugs if if there is uh, suspected like that. Okay. Mm. Okay, like in any any other team, they have mentioned here that you should have a team leader who is leading and the other people are assign the role, the same role, which is there in ACLS, assigning the role, team leadership, supervises, checking and see the response, One uh, just like in ACLS. Assessing the patient, including airway assessment and management, undressing, exposing, okay? Applying monitoring equipment, obtaining intravenous access and drawing blood, serving as a scribe or recorder of the resuscitation. So what else? Uh, missed. 
uh, okay just a second working on the patient unless uh, immediate life threatening condition are obvious hands off hand over a uh, useful acronym for manage manage this step is missed mechanism and time of injury injury is found and suspected symptoms and sign treatment initiated this will be leading for the for the handover like what was the injury and timing injury is found and suspected symptoms and sign and treatment initiated okay so abc assessment proceeds it is vital that each member knows what the other member have found okay so actually this is the just a repetition of the things so this chapter is finished now comes the you will uh, sabha can you remember these things happening in shamesi you maybe you will be missing these things am i right maybe you have you people have done much more than uh, other anywhere in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> so, airway management, I think we will continue tomorrow. Okay. I'm sorry because actually uh, this uh, may be boring for some few people. Uh, but uh, this topic, actually I have not discussed before ever in our discussions in detail. And uh, this will be helping you. I, I, will, I, I, I will request all of you to read um, it is then it will be better for you it will be easier for you to understand number of things which we are uh, seeing here are repetition but sometimes the implication of these things is too much okay so uh, like uh, try to have a look at it and inshallah we will continue our discussion uh, so this is tomorrow. from ATLS book this is ATLS uh, I, I shared the link this one you will find in the main uh, yes, Okay, so it's trauma. I put some of the yes, things. Uh, so trauma, uh, and, and I will just show you that uh, what was in my mind when I was starting this topic. So th this is what we are trying to learn. So damage control, resuscitation, airway management, in incubation, mills, whiplash injury, trauma scoring, pain management in trauma, imaging in trauma, bleeding management in trauma, trauma in specific group of people, okay, firearm injury, cervical spine clearance, Role of fast scan, fracture rib management, head injury management, CT scan, abdominal, thoracic, facial fractures, neck trauma, and ATLS. Long bone fractures, blast injuries, penetrating eye injury. Okay. So maybe we will take a few more days uh, to finish this thing. But uh, I hope this will be uh, this will help you in, in not only managing the patients. And uh, it is a very important topic with reference to the exam uh, point of view as well. Because I don't think so any exam will be finished without questions from the trauma. Okay. So thanks a lot all of you for uh, uh, being uh, attached with me. And remember one thing that the more, the more you try to learn, the more you should try to teach. Okay. The best way to learn is to teach. Uh, actually, if you go to uh, uh, Amir, uh, if you are in my WhatsApp group, I will share it there. And another thing is that if you are there, and if you have, you know about this YouTube channel, so uh, you you will find all these things arranged. Like uh, I made this new folder for uh, this one. Uh, just a second, it is other. Actually, the other channel is open here right now. So you will find another uh, uh, like this one uh, uh, playlist with uh, in uh, in the form of trauma. I, I think. I have closed the screen share. Just let me just show you before I finish. So in the channel, you will find in the playlist, you will go to the contents and then you will you will find in the playlist. Okay. In the playlist, I just made a new playlist with the trauma. So here you will find it and the main main link of the, the articles, the main link I, I have, this you will go here and uh, then you will find and go to the articles. Okay. And then you will find all the topics. Uh, unfortunately, recently, few years, articles I couldn't update. So I'm just trying to go topic by topic because it's a diff really difficult job. Uh, and I'm all alone. Very few people uh, come to help me out. So I, I always ask for volunteers to help me out because I don't have any, any financial or any personal interest. This is to serve my speciality. So... Uh, I cannot go alone, believe me. It's very difficult. And sometimes, so now what, what has happened, that is, this is one link. 
by the way i share this link on the youtube on the on the whatsapp group always so this is one link in which you will find these things and then you will go inside and you will find all the books and frca material and viva scenarios okay there is another another link here right here uh, which has uh, uh, because unfortunately i'm sorry not this one okay. you see i'm involved in so many things so it is very difficult to manage everything alone but still i am trying so you will find this link a separate link you I, this is the one which is updated okay just a second please so this is the link which is updated it has all the year wise articles arranged right from the their birth up to right up to june 2023 okay so these these this is the main link for where if you are not finding the topics you just have to search here okay because unfortunately i couldn't arrange pull out the year wise article because i download because i have got these subscriptions i have these are all paid subscriptions okay and i just uh, whenever the new new uh, like uh, chapter is coming so i just download all of them but it's a big task now to put these in the topic wise okay so unfortunately i am not able to do it it's a very difficult job believe me if someone can help me i will be really thankful okay so but at least you can find all the articles arranged in year wise so these are four sources one of these anesthesia icu very good articles very very good articles this is anesthesia tutorial of the week this is B British Journal of Educa B BG Education and these are updates in anesthesia. So all of them I have arranged year wise. So you can find anything. And this is for everyone. You can use all of these sources. Okay. So thank you very much. See you inshallah tomorrow. Bye bye. Any, any problem, any question, you can contact me anytime. Okay.